Today we're going to talk about personalization. As I mentioned in a couple of the previous lessons, uh, both the map screen and the EMS screen are very configurable uh, to personalize pretty much the way you want. Uh, the EMS as I have it set up right now is not the standard that came with the RV-12. I've configured it the way I like. Uh, that's also true of the map. Uh, on the map you have the little informational widgets here and on the engine management page uh, obviously those are all mapped to sensors. So to edit that uh, we always start, it seems like everything we do starts in the setup screen. So that's the two rightmost buttons. We are going to be working on the EMS setup. So we'll take the stick on the left and we're going to drop that down to EMS setup. And we're going to push it to the right to get over to the menu items. And what we're looking for is intuitively called the screen layout editor. And you can see over here there are actually three EMS screens. Uh, the one we looked at just moments ago is the 20% page. Uh, the 50% page you would see if you had two of the, two of the three screens uh, displayed at the same time. So let's say I've got uh, just two of the screens showing. I've got all the information I need on the PFD screen in my HSI, which is that navigational compass. I have all that I need uh, as I'm flying. I don't really need the moving map display. So I could turn that off and then have a 50% PFD screen and a 50% EMS page. So let's edit that one because I've actually never touched that one. Uh, I never actually have done the scenario that I just described, but someday I could. Uh, so we'll move over here. Uh, the 100% page, don't really want to mess with. We're going to mess with the 50% page. So I'm going to push that over there. And this is the default setup. And it's not bad, uh, but it has things kind of spread out. Uh, so it looks like I could get things a little bit closer together and get more sensors mapped and more things showing. I also have a pin here that clearly isn't even being used. So we've decided we don't need that CFG sensor. It's not doing anything. The can CFG question mark means it's just not configured. Uh, I don't even know what it would be if it was configured. Uh, whatever it would be would be on the 37 pin connector pin 12 plugged into the back of the sky view. Uh, but we don't need it at all, so we're going to remove it. Uh, so we're going to take sensor, and we're going to scroll down through the list until we find it. And there it is. Now we want to select that, so we're going to push the knob or the stick to the right. And now you can see that it's selected. Uh, now that it's selected, I can do a couple things to it. I can change its size, um, which is kind of pointless because I don't really want it. But let's go ahead and remove it. And now it's gone. And now we will say save. And we're back to the 50% page. If we look at it again, that center is gone. So now we can find one maybe that we would like to add in its place. Go to info. And these are things that we could add. So the asterisk means it's already displayed, so we don't need that. Uh, but let's say um, fuel remaining seems interesting. Let's take a look at it. I've never actually used it, but let's go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, we'll accept that. And now it's sitting right there in the middle. It's hard to see because it's sitting on something else. So because it's still highlighted, we can still move it around the screen. So I have nine gallons remaining. And actually, this is a, a, one of the sensors I have on the 20% screen because that's one I, I find very interesting. Um, actually that's uh, interesting because my fuel level is saying I have six gallons so uh, this one may be something that's actually useless to me um, but I can make it bigger so if it's something's useless just make it bigger. Uh, but we don't really want it so let's remove it. It's not anything interesting. Let's look for another one. Let's see if there's something in here that we like. Uh, let's go down and say a fuel efficiency would be interesting. That might be a miles per gallon kind of thing. So let's take a look at that. It's free to look. So we're going to accept that. And let's move it down where we can see it. And of course it can't really tell anything right now. There's no fuel flowing. So there's nothing for it to calculate. Uh, I might look at that one next time I'm flying. But for now let's remove it and try to find something that will actually have an indication right now. Uh, so we'll go back to info. Let's see what else is in the candy box here. Uh, there's some timers that would be interesting, uh, although we're not flying, so I won't care. Let's take a look at the engine runtime. Uh, pretty much every, there are a lot of things on the road tax that are based on engine time. Uh, so let's take a look at that one. And let's move it down where we can see it. I'm using this left knob. Here we've got uh, an hour and 17 minutes on the engine. Well, that doesn't sound right either. So I'm not sure what uh, that little sensor is intended to tell us. So we're not particularly interested in that one either. So we're going to remove it. We're getting really good at removing things. Um, info, let's see what else there is. Tack time. I think we can put tack time up there. Uh, so we're going to accept that. And there's my tack time. There we go. 120.4 hours. That looks about right. So there is tack time. So we can put that right there. 
uh, or actually I have one up here I'm not using. So let's let's put this where it is for now. We're just going to save it right there and then get back in here. And let's get rid of this uh, WT, WPT gallon. Not really sure what that is. Don't use it. Let's get it out of there so it has a center. And uh, if these are alphabetized, it'll be down at the bottom. Uh, no such luck. Okay, it's not a sensor, it's an info thing, so we'll cancel that, we'll go into info. And it should be down in here somewhere. Fuel at waypoint, there it is. We don't need fuel at waypoint, so we're going to push that to the right, and we're going to remove that. And now I want to put my uh, tack time, I want to move that back up, right up under my Hobbs time. That seems to make some sense. So let's pick that sensor, or as that was info, let's pick that info. That's tack time. We're going to select that, and we're going to move it up right underneath the Hobbs. There we go. And push that over a little bit. And let's make it a little bit bigger so it matches the hobs. Line it up the best I can. And hit save. And now, let's see how that worked. Let's go back. Let's exit out of this. And we're back up to the top screen. Now I'm on the 20% page. To get to the 50% page, I'm going to go to screen. And I'm going to turn off the map page. Uh, that didn't work well at all. Uh, we have to go do layout, and so we get to a 50-50 page. There's the 50-50 page. And if I want it the other way around, which would probably be my preference, there we go. And as you can see, I now have tack time in addition to Hobbs time on my EMS screen. Now having added a sensor or info, uh, there is a difference. I guess a sensor is anything that has some physical component, and info is something that's figuring out by itself in the computer. Uh, let's go back into setup, and let's play around with some of the styles. So we're going to go down to EMS Setup again, and we're looking at Screen Layout, and we're looking at the 50% page. And let's look at this manifold pressure gauge. Although I like it the way it is, let's say I want that to look a little bit different. Uh, that is probably a sensor because there is, in fact, a physical manifold pressure sensor sitting on the firewall of the engine. So let's look for that sensor. And we'll go down here to... Manifold pressure right there, and we're going to select that. Now what we're looking at is a style button. So as every time I press the style button, we're going to get a different style of displaying that. And actually that's the one I like the best. That's the easiest one to see. So we're just going to leave it there. Uh, we can do the same thing. We can accept that. We'll save that setting even though we didn't change anything. We'll go back over here. And maybe let's see what we can do um, with the EGTs or the, C the cylinder head temps or one of those. There's cylinder head temp right there. So that's a convenient one. So we select it, we push to the right, there it is, and let's see what different styles we can get on that. And see there, I could actually go with uh, nice round gauges on all of my cylinder head temps. Uh, and it looks like I have room to do that. I can make that a little bit smaller, I imagine. There we go. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's just carry that process all the way through. So we'll look for the other cylinder head temp. There, I have two of them. Actually, I'm not sure if they show up individually or not. It seems like they must. Yes, there it is. So we'll select that. And it's style. We'll make it a little roundy again. And size. There it is. And let's push it on over here next to it. So they're laying set to each other. There we go. And that might need to go up a little bit. Nope, right, right about there. So we're going to save that. And I can continue doing that until I have the page the way I want it. One thing I should mention while I'm doing all this fiddling around is I don't need to save after each step. So, for example, I'm going to move the um, EGT left, so I'm going to grab that one. I'm going to move it down low here by the EGT right. Uh, I discovered a nice way to line these up to make sure they're uh, level, is I can just put it on top of the other one. And when, see how that, uh, when the one is completely behind there, then I'm on the same level. And I can just bump it on over here. Now instead of doing save and coming back into the screen like I was, I'm just going to go ahead and grab a different sensor. So we'll just save it all when we're done. There's no sense uh, saving every step. It's not like it's a Linux computer. <laughs> that's, that's an inside joke because it actually is. Uh, we're going to select that one. And the same thing. I'll move it down here. Make sure it's level. by Just putting it on top of another one. Getting them all lined up. And there we go. And I'm just going to bring it on over to the right. So I'm going to keep doing this, and I'll check back in when I have it the way I like it so you can see the final result. So here it is all laid out the way I like it. Um, probably fly with it next time I fly, see if I really like it. It looks good from here. Uh, so the other thing we can do on um, personalization is the map screen. So let's get out of this. We're back at our top page. Everything is good. Uh, now we're going to customize the map screen. 
And before we can do that, we have to turn it back on. So that's the screen button, and there's the map page. So now we're going to do the layout of the map page. This one is done a little bit differently. You don't go into the uh, Dine and Skyview setup menu for this. This is actually on the map menu. So let's go to map, and we'll go to map menu. And what we have are info items and map items. So let's go down the menu here and look at info items. And you can see that I have five on the left, five on the right that I can configure. And then I can select what I want those to be. So my top left is ground speed. I look at that a lot. Uh, my second one down is what my next waypoint is. That would be the identifier for it. Then I have the estimated time on route to that waypoint and the distance to that waypoint. I'm not doing anything on the fifth one on the left because my ADSB information screen is there. So it really wouldn't get much use out of that. Now the GPS altitude, that's something I don't use a lot. So let's look and see what we can put in place of the GPS altitude. So we'll go down to the top one on the right and go over here and see what might be interesting to use. Uh, bearing to waypoint, course, cross track. I don't care about any of that. Uh, ground speed I've already got. Next course, don't care. Next waypoint, don't care. Vertical speed required to the destination, uh, which actually displays on the PFD of sorts. You can kind of figure that out. It's not very useful. Uh, so really, I guess I had um, picked the most desirable of the list of least desirables when I put the whatever I had over there. I've already forgotten. Now let's go ahead and put in next waypoint just so we can see what it looks like. So I hit accept to that. And we're done with this. And we're going to always go back to the top screen. There we're back at the top. And then uh, next waypoint is right there. So uh, if I was flying a fairly complicated, maybe even instrument approach, that'd be kind of handy to know uh, what's that next waypoint I'm going to be. Maybe it's the, uh, might even be the final approach fix, which I certainly care about. Uh, and I believe that is, um, Actually, I'm not sure I saved that. That looks like probably distance to the next waypoint, but hard to tell without anything going on with the GPS. But the concept is the same. You'll pick what you want to have there. And so we discovered the next thing we can configure is uh, the map info. And what that's going to be is what shows up and when. So for example, uh, I'm currently on an 8 nautical mile range. And when I'm flying uh, anything 30 nautical miles or less in range, I use course up. Uh, anything more than that, I use north up because now you're starting to look at it as if it was a wall map. So let's edit that. We'll go into the map menu and we'll go to map items. And let's say that I want to actually go um, course up at 30 nautical miles instead of the next one up. So map items. And here, these are showing what will show. Uh, so fixes, uh, for example, um, at 8 nautical miles, that's the maximum range at which I will show fixes. And let's say I, and the reason for that is they do really tend, there's a lot of them and they tend to clutter up the screen. But let's say that I need to be able to see those at 12 miles out. So this is where I would set that. Except, and back, and I'm not sure we'll be able to tell, so we're going all the way back up to the top. Uh, so at eight miles, there's a fix. Uh, at 12 miles, um, there's a lot of fixes. Now those should all go away at the next step up. And there they went. So that's how I can see fixes. Uh, if you had a, of course, if you had fixes displayed all the way, actually airports, I should probably get rid of at the 50 mile range. If you had fixes displayed at the 50 mile range, that's probably all you would see is just a, fl a cloud of little blue fixes. Um, you can see how this has gone north up. So that was one of my settings. So there's lots of things in there. So you can get in there and kind of poke around and see what you want to see, what you want to have go away uh, as you change the zoom level on your map. And there is actually a third uh, configuration or personalization, person, personalization menu uh, within the map setup. And let's look at that one because there is one thing that uh, is actually pretty important. And to me, it is the direction that you turn this knob to zoom or unzoom. Uh, I have grown up, I don't, for whatever reason, turning clockwise to zoom. So as I turn clockwise to zoom in, you can see the mileage changing, turning counterclockwise takes us back out. That is not the default. Uh, the default setting was turn clockwise to zoom out. It took me quite a while to get used to it, and I no sooner did uh, than I received a firmware update from Dynan where they changed, or I didn't change it, they gave us the option to change it. So where you would do that, it's map, and it's your map menu, and as your map mode 
menu. Here we go. Oops, one too many. There we go. And what you're looking for is, let's see, increase map range. So increasing your map range is zooming out. And I currently have that set to counterclockwise. You would just go over here, say clockwise, except we'll jump uh, all the way back up. And now I'm zooming out when I go clockwise. And I'm going to change that back right now because that would quickly drive me crazy the next time I flew. So we're going to get into map mode. And we're going to set that back to counterclockwise. Except. And the other kind of stuff that's in here, uh, when you're in a full screen map, which which of these knobs did you want to be? The map knob. The default is the right knob, and that's what I've grown used to, so I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, the rest of the stuff... Um, that's not stuff I mess around with. But here's where that map mode, uh, where I determined where to do track up or course at 30 nautical miles. So the, the actual question is where you want to track up through what range. And I want track up through a 30 nautical mile range. If I wanted to change that, it's probably pretty simple. I'm going to go up here and just pick it right here. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it as is because I'm used to it. Um, actually, it looks like I'm track up all the way through. Oh, that is actually setting it. That's that's what it is. The def the other option is, of course, north up. So this is the, this is where you would set your track up, and that's where I want it up through 30 nautical miles, and that's that.